Pastor Don. Oh, yes, I am. Hey, welcome. It is good to see you guys here today. And uh, what can I say? This is a day to welcome. And uh, we are welcoming, first of all, a new musician. Gabrielle is playing for us. And believe me, it's not easy to come into a church for the first time and play a traditional service on organ, a contemporary service on electric piano, and then the Hispanic service after this. So that's very cool. Also, Noah and Megan, we're going to welcome them. Uh, they are candidates to be the DCE intern uh, to work with our youth and others during the coming year this summer. So they're just kind of visiting the site, and uh, we're trying not to overwhelm them with all the things happening at Bethel, but uh, that is a cool thing. And finally, I'm going to welcome Steve Harrington. Uh, Steve is the president of our congregation. This is the first Sunday of the month, which is Communication Update Month, or day, I should say. So, Steve, if you would take it away. Good morning. Well, I have six points, and I think the first service, Tricia, who is my wife, counted, and I think I did it less than five minutes, so I'll see if I can do it under five minutes again. The uh, first thing is you've already kind of been preempted here. Uh, we, we do want to welcome our DCE candidates, uh, and so thank you for being here. Tricia and I had the pleasure of having them in our backyard last night for a COVID-free pizza party. And uh, it was a pleasure, and I, hopefully you guys both felt the same way we did. Uh, we enjoyed it, besides the fact of getting to learn about you, but we really enjoyed your company, so thank you for being here. The second point is our COVID point, and I know the state of Texas has made several decisions, and that's fine and dandy, but I, I'm asking our opening committee and our committee to continue to ask all of us to do what we're doing now. Uh, I think in order to keep the congregation and those people who might be visitors, and those people who might be, be willing to come back to live service, we will continue to social distance, we will continue to keep our masks on, and let's just continue to go forward with that so that people feel comfortable coming to live service. So we don't want to make somebody feel uncomfortable. So I, I'll ask that we continue to do that. ELC is moving forward very, very nicely. Uh, actually, needing teachers, how cool is that? Uh, a year ago, we were trying to make sure that we financially kept our teachers financially with the PPP, and yes, we did have some parents that had to take their children out, but our, our ELC is now back to growing again, and we're back to almost capacity, so we're, what a neat thing to be growing and need, need to hire teachers. So we are in the process of now looking for teachers, which is a cool thing. Capital improvement. You'll hear probably at some point, because we heard in the first service, you'll hear a little bit about the capital improvement. And yes, we, I won't steal his thunder, but yes, we are on our way towards our goal of 133 plus. But those of you that may not have uh, offered something into that commitment or been able to feel financial that you can give, please consider so. And those of you that are live streaming, please consider so, because we'd like to get the capital together before we literally start turning wrenches and pull pews out and everything else. So, and remember, everything counts. You may not be able to give a huge amount, but it doesn't matter. Everything counts. Another thing that I thought was, was powerful for the congregation to know as a whole, for the first time we've crossed for the financial base. We usually have been fluctuating back and forth, but now our financial base for our endowment fund is over $200,000. So that also is cool because we're able to give back every year. So now our, our money coming out of that for the uh, interest and so forth is around 6000 So we'll be pulling that money again as a congregation and voting on where we want to spend it. So how cool is that? The uh, last thing I want to leave with is a, it's probably more me than anybody else. Maybe it's just because I think it's the congregation needs to know it and feel it. Um, we have, a year ago, we got forced into a situation that we had never been prepared for. We may have always maybe dreamed about it, but we, you know, no one really thought at Bethel, I've been here 50 something years, no one really thought about live streaming and recording our services, it sounds cool, but I can remember years ago we talked about, Randy and I talked about having a camera over there and it'd be really cool for the shut-ins and so forth, but we never did anything. And now we're in a situation where 
we don't have a choice if we want to keep our congregants, congregation feeling like they're still part. So, with a lot of hard work and people giving and people dedicated to stay with it, including Natalie back there hiding behind her monitor, those, those people that, that kept us straight and kept working on trying to get us technology, maybe deprived congregation to the point that we kind of moved into the 21st, 22nd century. Now, this is what's cool. Now we're weeks away from being able to street, live stream our third service and our fourth service, which means we'll, be, we'll, we'll be have the opportunity to reach relatives, friends, Panama, Guatemala, Africa. And I think that is so cool. So I'll leave with that and turn you over to your service. Thank you so much and continue to continue to keep together and continue to recognize what we do as a, as a congregation and to God be the glory. Thank you, Steve. It's always good to have a positive report from our leadership. But now we're going to stand up and we're going to praise God with our first song. <laughs> day to be in the house of God. We continue with our invocation. Welcome in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, Father in heaven, O oh Son of God, Redeemer of the world, O oh God, the Holy Spirit, we continue with the confession of our faith, of our sins. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on me. 
sin of the world, have mercy on us. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Have you confessed your sins? I have good news. In the name and by the power of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, God remembers them no more. And as God's forgiven children, we sing out our song of praise. as we pray together. Almighty God, because you know that we of ourselves have no strength to obey your commands, that we would fall if tempted beyond what we can bear, keep our hearts and minds from all evil thoughts, our tongues from evil words, our hands from evil actions, and defend our bodies from all harm and danger, that we may serve you in faith and stand firm in the face of temptation. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading this morning is Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, 
for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the, Lord's, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and restored them on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 19, 1, verses 7 through 10 and 14. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The, precep the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. He rules of the, the rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, e even fi much finer than gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is the epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 24. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since is in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. The Passover of the Jews was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. And now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them, because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated for the next song.
to a virgin, lived a perfect life, greatly suffered, dying for us from the great he's risen. All right, this time we have the children's message, and we're not having kids come up right now, but hey, if you're watching at home or out there, kids, uh, hey, this is for you. And I have a couple things that I keep in my office, some praying hands, and actually both of these were made for me by members of the congregation. Uh, and uh, today, Jesus talks about God's temple being a place of prayer not a marketplace. And I want to teach you something that uh, I do every week with the kids in chapel. By the way, until last Wednesday, I had to do chapel for the early learning center kids on video, which was fine. But finally, Wednesday, they came back live for the first time, and it was so cool. But at any rate, some of you know there's a show on PBS called Daniel Tiger, and it relates to old Mr. Rogers back in the day. And they have all these great songs that they use to teach kids good things. Like the one I remember is, uh, think about what someone else is feeling, think about. And you know, hey, that's a way to have empathy. Think about what someone else is feeling. But I decided, you know what? I need to make up a song about prayer just like Daniel Tiger does. So this is the prayer song that I teach and use with our children in the Early Learning Center. And it goes like this. When we pray, this is what we say. Thanks, God. Wow. Help me now. And uh, what can I say? It does the three things that almost all prayers do. And one of them is to say, help. Uh, generally, I think when we pray, that's what we pray most of all. Help, God, I'm helpless. I need your help. But there are many times, too, we say, thanks, God. Uh, what a beautiful day we have today. Uh, you know, 
thanks for being able to be here to worship. So we say thanks. And then, uh, wow, which I would call praise. But sometimes you just look at the world God created or something he has done, and all you can say is, wow. And so anyway, those are three ways to think about praying, help, thanks, wow. And that little song helps us uh, to remember that's how we pray. All right, boys and girls, thank you. And um, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon text today is the gospel reading, which I already read from the gospel of John. I don't know what's happening in your neighborhood, but in my neighborhood, there's some major house cleaning going on. Not just the old spring cleaning, which I don't even know anybody does anymore, but at least two homes in my street have a pile of ruined carpets and stuff from the water damage, from the snow cop, snow apocalypse. By the way, I just learned a new word for that event a few weeks ago, Dalaska, okay? <laughs> I kind of like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, what a mess uh, for some of my neighbors to have to deal with that. And uh, there are many people dealing with that today, so people are cleaning a house. Now, what's interesting to me is that this whole COVID-19 thing which, by the way, this is the year anniversary, I think, or next week is, depending on where you rate it from, uh, ha has been a time where I think people have been able to do a spiritual house cleaning. It, it's, it's really been like a year-long Lent, you know? We've been having to give up all kinds of stuff for the last year. And, and uh, what that does for us is perhaps give us this time to reflect, to repent, to think. So... Uh, this has given us a chance for a spiritual house cleaning, if you will. So in today's text, Jesus does a house cleaning of the Father's house. Uh, by the way, there are two times in scriptures where Jesus clears out the temple. One here at the beginning of his ministry and one during Holy Week, which kind of brought everything to a head, which led to his crucifixion. Uh, but uh, here Jesus cleanses the temple because... Um, it is very easy to turn anything into a money-making opportunity, even religion, even faith. So the leaders of the church of that time saw a need. Well, these people are supposed to come three times a year to the temple for these various festivals like Passover, and they need to make offerings. So rather than hauling, you know, a sheep or goat or ox or whatever, a hundred miles or so to come here, let's have a place where we can sell these things, and people can buy them, and let's have money changers so we get in right currency, and all that kind of stuff, and that maybe is okay, you know, so far so good, but what happens, and what happened then, and still happened today, is people take advantage of these situations. It's kind of like uh, a few weeks ago, when if you wanted to find a, a firewood, you had to, you know, pay through the roof to do that, or water, or whatever. Uh, and uh, that's what was happening at the temple. They were overcharging for one thing, but uh, there was something else going on too. Uh, and they were really uh, hurting the Gentiles, the Greek believers, uh, people who weren't Jews by birth, but who still worshipped the true God. And, and let me explain this. So the temple at Jerusalem first built by Solomon in about 80, I mean, B.C., 1,000 B.C., and torn down by the Babylonians, rebuilt by Zerubbabel around 400, and, and now it's being refurbished by King Herod. That's why the 46 years, they say. Uh, it had zones of holiness. So the holy of holies, the most holy place, you could go into that once a year and only one guy, the high priest on the Day of Atonement. That was the only time you could go to that most holy place. The holy place, just outside of that, you could go in every day to offer incense, but then, again, it was only the priest who was on duty. Outside of that court was the court of uh, the Jews, and in this case, Jewish men could go and worship and pray there. Then the court of the women, where Jewish women could come and worship and pray and then finally, the court of the Gentiles. That was the outside 
court where people who weren't Jew by birth could come and worship and pray. So, guess where the Jewish leaders decided to put up the marketplace to sell all the animals? You got it. The court of the Gentiles. Can you imagine coming a hundred miles to worship and pray to God and to have the place where you were allowed to do it be smelly with all kinds of animals and noisy with all kinds of people selling stuff? And, you know, that's really what Jesus objected to. And that's why in the second cleansing, he said, my temple should be a house of prayer for all the people, including the Greeks, the Gentile believers. And so that's what really upset Jesus. And that's why he took that whip of cords. By the way, the only time we know of in the Bible that Jesus wields any kind of weapon at all. But I kind of guess if you'd have just looked in his eyes at the indignation, that would have driven all those people out anyway. But he turned everything over and he said, you shouldn't make my father's house a house of trade. And his disciples said, ah, this reminds me of one of the Psalms where it says, zeal for his house will consume him. Jesus was zealous for the house of the Lord. So, he had strong objections to what was going on there, and so he rid the temple all of all that. I think for us today, the lesson is, uh, what's this place for? This little branch of the kingdom of God, of the church of Jesus. And, uh, you know, we are stewards of, of, of this facility. You know, we keep it up and, you know, we, we cleanse it down after every service and, and we do all those things so that we can be welcoming to people and to the community in God's name. But the purpose of the church is not for us to keep it clean. Uh, the purpose of the church is a place to offer prayer and praise to hear the word of God, to grow as disciples, to share Jesus to the world around us as God has called us to do. So uh, that's what the house of the Lord is for. And uh, in one of our services, we, we, we pray this prayer almost every week for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And that's kind of cool. That every week we pray for this, this house. Uh, again, you know, it, it's, there's more to it, but we do pray. Now, Jesus' actions in cleansing the temple had uh, another dimension as well. It's very interesting to me that the Jews were not opposed to what Jesus did. They didn't say, don't do that. That's bad. What they did say was, though, what kind of sign do you give to prove that you have the authority to do this? And as we heard in the epistle reading for today, Jews ask for signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But Paul says, what do we preach? Christ crucified, not signs or wisdom. But they wanted a sign and Jesus gave them this very cryptic statement. He says, okay, you're looking for a sign? Tear down this house and I will build it in three days. Now, they thought, is he crazy? This thing takes years to build. What's going on? But uh, John says Jesus was referring, referring to his body. And the three days are the days from Good Friday and in the tomb to Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day. By the way, the only sign Jesus ever promises to give to people is the resurrection uh, when they ask for those kind of of, of signs. And Jesus was being very radical here. The people had got the mistaken idea that God was only present in this temple, and that if they wanted to meet God, they had to come there. Jesus says in Matthew, something greater than the temple is here. And he's talking about himself. And, and, and you know, honestly, the people uh, of those old times trusted in the temple too much. You know, read the prophet Jeremiah. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. No one can destroy it. And, of course, that's exactly what happened. It was destroyed. 
God saying, no, I'm not just there. You know, yeah, I am there, but I'm elsewhere as well. It's very interesting to me that in this last year, we have gotten an appreciation for the presence of God everywhere. Uh, many people have missed worship in God's house. Uh, at the first service this morning, there was a woman who hadn't been for months. Uh, this gentleman right here hasn't been all year. And isn't it great to be in the Lord's house? Uh, I mean, how wonderful that is. But we've also learned over this last year that we could worship God, you know, online as well. I have to tell you, though, that some of our bad habits of uh, Internet and TV watching have, have filtered over into the way people watch worship. So, you know, they got their, they got their remote out, okay, and they've got the fast-forward button going. So if they don't like this part, they just zap through that and go on to the next one. Uh, and I'm just being somewhat facetious, but uh, uh, nonetheless, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, but I think what people have learned is that God is present everywhere. And, and, and through this, this pandemic and even this snowstorm, I think people have learned to reach out more to their neighbors and to be the hands and feet of Jesus where God has put them, which may be in their home, you know, in their neighborhood, wherever that might be. So uh, in some ways, uh, this has been a learning time for us. Um, and I, I look forward to the day when uh, more and more people are vaccinated and all that stuff has happened and we can feel comfortable being together in the Lord's house. As Steve said before, until that time, we watch out for each other with the masks and the distancing and, and all that stuff as well. Um, there is one last thing from this text that I think helps us. Jesus knew that some people came only to see the miraculous signs. And we know people like this. Well, I'll trust in God if he does this for me or proves himself in this way or keeps me from this hardship or whatever. And if he doesn't, you know, why should I trust him? It becomes more of a contract and a business agreement than a relationship. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to me, and I always love when... Uh, you know, we read the Ten Commandments like we read today here, and I don't know if you've ever given thought to this, but the commandments don't begin, do this. The first verse of Exodus 20 is, God said to the people, what? I am the Lord your God, who took you out of the house of bondage. I brought you out of slavery. And then, therefore... You will have no other gods before me. You will honor the name of the Lord. You will remember the Sabbath day and so on and so forth. It's a relationship where God acts first in grace. I have saved you from slavery. And, and it's our response then to, to keep God's commands. It's not like we have to keep them first and then God will love us. He loves us in every way, no matter who who we are, what we've done. But in response, we uh, follow those commandments. That, that we, we know they're God's best for us, so that is what we do. So it's a relationship, a covenant between us and God. Jesus did not need the approval of people. And uh, there are many approval junkies out there. I think I'm one of them. You know, I, I want people to like me. Maybe you're the same way. But Jesus wanted more. He didn't want people to like him. That didn't matter to him. What he wanted was a deep and abiding relationship of grace so that they could trust his goodness in good times and in bad, in wonder and in woe. And Jesus did things his way, which was also his Father's way. And more often than not, he didn't act in the way people expected him to act. Uh, but in God's way. So, overall, I think the message for us today is we continue uh, to be cleansed. You know, we, we had in our liturgy today, create in me a pure heart, O God. And God is at work doing that house cleaning uh, in us because really, we are all houses of God. We are all temples of the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, that's what Christians are. So sometimes we need a thorough house cleaning as well. And we celebrate the presence of Jesus. Uh, you know, we don't need a place or a temple. And honestly, Jesus is right here in the sacrament of Holy Communion. When we receive the bread and the wine, we are receiving the body and blood of Jesus. So we don't need to go someplace else to sacrifice or to experience God's presence. We've got it with us right now. And in terms of approval, uh, there's only one person that matters, and that is God. And what's great about God is He approves us through the cross of Jesus, even us sinners, and calls us His children and says, you are my beloved sons and daughters. Uh, that's the way God feels about us. So may God grant the house cleansing in our hearts, the worship of the Jesus who is present with us, and uh, may we bask in the approval of God, our loving Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand now and confess our faith. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He sits in heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. This is the time in our worship when we would normally bring our tithes and offerings together. Um, of course, we're not passing the plate because of, of just being an abundance of safety, as, as, as Steve mentioned at the beginning of the service. Uh, but there is an opportunity to do that and um, also to fill out your uh, registration card on the way out. And we, we do thank you all for continuing to support Bethel's uh, ministry and mission to the community uh, through your, your tithes and offerings, um, on, both online and by, by sending your, your checks in. And also with the, as, as Steve mentioned, with the, the capital fund drive to, to bring to upgrade our sanctuary space uh, to assure that we will have you know we have four groups using this it's it's poor poor Noah and Megan they're going to get the full experience of Bethel today you know we, we have worship in, in this building from 8 30 to about four ish with the with the fourth service so every day so it's it's a every Sunday so it's a blessing that that, get, that we're be able to use this space for worship in that way and in different languages and different ways and so all the, the funds that are going to that is going to Help us spruce this up and bring it, you know, bring it uh, up to uh, up, some upgrades in the in this worship space. So, uh, we continue our worship with our prayers. Uh, if you brought, if you grabbed one of the bulletins, uh, some of the families, the names of people that we're we're praying for are on, are on the bulletin, um, and uh, we continue to pray through uh, ten families a week of, of our church community. And, and this week we had four of the of the families listed. Four of them are ninety or older. So it, it's kind of a cool thing that. You know, to, to, to walk alongside people that, that have, have lived the faith, have, have run the race. They're probably not running literally anymore, but run the race um, for that long and, and continue to, especially through COVID and everything else. So we go, we go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you just uh, grateful that you are the, the creator of the world. Uh, that we were reminded uh, in our readings this day of, of your commandments and, and, and your son who came to not you know, to, to fulfill the commandments, because knowing that we never could. Those commandments still matter, and the way we treat each other still matters, and, and the way, we, 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 uh, respond, and the way we, we show our love to you matters, Lord. But we pray that we will be people that, that don't, do, don't do these things out of any sense of obligation or out of any sense of gaining your favor, but in response to the, the incredible love that you've shown us, especially through, through your son who died on the cross. On our behalf, uh, we pray, and pray for this season of Lent. Um, that we would use that to grow deeper to you as we, as we meditate on your word and on your passion and as we prepare for Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Uh, we pray for the, for the suffering, Lord, uh, the, among us, for, for Lil, for Teresa, for Bob, for Mark, 
uh, for the families in, in our church, in our, our Bethel, in, in our community center, and our, our, our early learning center, and our, 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 our school partners and our partners in the community, all that are, are especially uh, battling uh, things around COVID and other, other suffering. Uh, we pray for, for Mel, um, asking uh, for comfort in the loss of his son, Barry. Uh, we pray for the following families of our congregation, for the Hedge families, Lord, uh, for the Hale families, uh, for the Harmon families, for the Hanson families, for the Harms family, Lord, for the Harper families, for the Harris family, for the Hay families, and for, for Harrington, for Elise Harrington. We, we pray that you will remember all these families in your mercy and that you will continue to, to in, encourage them as, as part of the Bethel community. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for, for Gabrielle and her, her, her starting uh, this Sunday um, as our interim uh, worship leader, a music leader. Uh, we thank you for the, the visit of, of, of Noah and Megan uh, to, to consider how you may be using them or us to, to be a part of, of, of their D.C. internship experience. Uh, we pray as we continue to, to, to uh, go through COVID and especially even as, um, you know, uh, th things are improving and ca cases are going down, but it's, there's still so much out there, Lord, that we need to be mindful of. So we, we, we pray for patience during this time. Uh, we pray for uh, a sense of community. Uh, the people here who are isolated will feel reached out and loved. Uh, we pray for those that have been impacted financially from this, uh, business owners and the like. We pray for people to make uh, good decisions in this, Lord. Uh, we pray especially that for those who are uh, a prayer of thanksgiving, for those especially at risk who have already been vaccinated, and that that, 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 that vaccine will be made available for all soon. And as we come to your table, Lord, uh, we pray uh, that, that it will strengthen us, uh, that, that experiencing your very body and blood, the mystery that it is. We don't know how it all works, but we, we trust in the words that your uh, son gave us that it will uh, strengthen us. So we pray all these things, uh, boldly praying the words that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we get ready to come to the table of our Lord, just a reminder of that one, you have the option of, of taking it from the, the pew. We have the kits, if that's your preference. Also, after uh, the Lamb of God is sung, uh, we will invite you to come to the table. We ask you to stay kind of in your your bubble or your, your, your family group um, and, and, and give space uh, for, for the group ahead of you uh, while we do that. So just we're still to want to honor the, the, the social distancing and all that, um, just as, as Steve said, just you know, to keep people feeling safe and comfortable in, in worship. So we pray, the, we, we just encourage you to do that. It was the night on his betrayal that our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread from the Passover meal. He broke it. He gave the disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way also, he took the cup, having given thanks, having blessed it. He gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you eat and drink this in remembrance of me. First, uh, welcome to the table of our Lord.
Please rise for the blessing. Now may the eating and drinking of Christ's very own body and blood strengthen and preserve you this day forward. Depart in his peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We, we continue with our closing song, Wonderful, Merciful Savior. love and serve the Lord. And we invite our youth, they're going to hang, stay and hang um, with, uh, get, get, get a chance to get to know uh, Megan and Noah, so we'll be hanging out at the gym here in a little bit and having lunch and all that good stuff. So thank you all.